So another important pitched instrument uh, for bands and symphony orchestras is the timpani. Timpanis are very large drums. You can't even wrap your arms around them. They're so big. And um, they are tuned by the player using a foot pedal uh, connected to metal rods that tighten or loosen the drum head. They pull down and it stretches the material. Um, the tighter the head, the higher the pitch. Um, also, the smaller the drum, the higher the pitch. And timpanis do come in multiple sizes. In middle school, you might just play two timpani, but in high school and beyond, the standard is four drums or more, and definitely even more if you're playing a timpani solo. Uh, here is a video of the famous timpani part to an even more famous piece of music. It's, it's called Also Spracht Zarathustra. German for you. Um, and it's famous because it was featured in the film 2001 A Space Odyssey. But it's been used in other movies, TV shows, and advertisements. I'm almost positive every one of you will have heard this before either in its original or spoofed someplace else. So here's the epic timpani part to this famous tune. unpitched percussion instruments is truly huge, so we're not going to even attempt to cover them all right now. Instead, let's focus on two really critical instruments in a band or symphony orchestra, the bass drum and the snare drum. The concert bass drum is the largest of the bass drums and is usually suspended on a large frame on wheels. I have played this thing. It is very loud and very big. <laughs> the player uses one or two large mallets to hit one side of the drum. Bass drums are also used in marching bands and are the central part of a drum kit. It's all about that bass. <laughs> Here's a quick video of a bass drum being played in an orchestra. Check out the huge bass drum. It makes the regular bass drum look tiny. Mm.
percussionists sometimes get to have a lot of fun. But then again, they can't play what a cello plays, you know. So. <laughs> the snare drum is a percussion instrument that produces a sharp staccato sound when the head is struck with a drumstick due to the series of stiff wires that run underneath um, the, the drum head on the bottom and they're held in tension against the lower string, uh, lower skin. Snare drums are often used in orchestras, concert bands, marching bands, parades and drum lines, drum corps, and, and more. It is also one of the important pieces of a drum set. As a young snare player, though, you'll have to, you have to learn your rudiments. There's about 40 rudiments, kind of like standard little patterns that you play to learn more complicated stuff. Um, well, some of them are pretty complicated themselves. And there's 40 of them in total, which are rhythms and patterns and techniques that are essential part of snare playing. Um, plus, they have cool names like flam, para, uh, pataflafla. Did I say that right? Pataflafla, paradiddle, and a flamacue. Fun. Let's check out a snare solo that incorporates some of these elements. The percussion family is truly huge. And we didn't cover some important instruments like cymbals, drum set, congas, shakers, or bells. So let's showcase more of this big family with a video of the piece Linus and Lucy by the composer Vince Guaraldi and see if you can identify some of the percussion instruments we talked about today. please the joke of the week what do you call it when you practice your snare rudiments on a pillow per cushion <laughs> oh, oh you know you know as drum jokes go that one is pretty hard to beat hey hey oh it's a whiz banger that's good that's the best i got thing. a million of them here all week best thing i've heard today it's early yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See you later, guys. Thank you so much. Good to see you. Thanks, Ms. Kerr, for joining us. Good to see you, everybody.
Woohoo. Bye. Okay.